there. Welcome to Apron's Off, the show where we stop cooking and just hang out with each other because maybe we like each other. We are paid to like each other. That's true. That's which true. is the best way to have friends. <laughs> that's just true. Pay for them. That's right. And today we're going to be talking about the dishes that made us absolutely fall in love <sighs> with cooking. I um, love. I love love. That's good. <laughs> but yeah, let's let's show off the dishes that have inspired us to be where we are today, and kind of just tell the people what it's all about. Yeah. You want to start off, Lily? Yeah. Okay, tell us what you got. This is my dish. Wow. And Did you expect it to be? I want to, like, it's the an crowd in it and Oprah. Wow. Yeah, so this is um, based off of crying tiger sauce, but it's mm. a crudo dish. And um, the first restaurant I worked at after I decided not to do finance anymore was called The Raymond in Pasadena. Mm -hmm. And this is Chef Johnny, shout out. He taught me this dish. It has palm sugar and Thai chilies, and you basically take a mortar and pestle and and just mash it up. Mm -hmm. And then you add in um, cilantro and Thai basil. Beautiful. And lots of fish sauce and lime juice. And it was really the dish that taught me like the balance of all those sour, oh, salty. That's uh, very uh, cool. Mommy, yeah. So if you want to try it. So this is after culinary school. This is before culinary school. So that's oh, also the uh, thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah, he was like the first chef that believe I didn't know what a salamander was. I didn't know how to hold my knife right. A salamander is like a lizard, except it can it exists both in water and on land. Yeah. And its skin is porous and actually absorbs water so it doesn't need to drink. Also you can <laughs> put stuff in it and it burns really That's easily. Right. The and, sally. Yeah. yeah. The sally. Well I have my fork ready. Okay, let's try this dish. Okay, what is the fish that you use? Red snapper. And that Whoa. was like a whole other thing, learning how to fillet fish. I ruined so many fish. But yeah, I mean I would have to like try this, season it, and adjust like 20 times, and then I would send it back to Chef Johnny, and he'd be like, it needs this and this. <laughs> yeah, flick it around. <laughs> um, and it just, I learned a lot from it. That's so good. That is so good. That's so good. It reminds me of a lot of like Vietnamese dishes that I, oh. uh, those were also some dishes when I like moved up to Little Saigon that like really taught me like, oh, balance of sweet, of mm -hmm. acid, of mm -hmm. herb, of spice, mm -hmm. all that. Damn, that's good. That's yeah. gorgeous. It's like a, a super simple dish, but I feel like cooking for me, it it redefined the way cook it, what cooking meant. Cause like totally. I used to think it was following a recipe and hoping it turns out good. Yeah. But it's really just like understanding the ingredients and like know how they change every single day. Like I asked for a recipe for this and he was like, he laughed at me and he's like, <laughs> no, this is not a recipe. You literally just have to taste your food and just adjust as needed. That's so. an incredible thing. Like uh, one day a Thai chili will be spicier than the other yeah. day. One day your cilantro will be a little bit greener tasting. So yep. I think it's really interesting that he taught you that yep. skill because it's a, it's a really, really good skill to have yeah. when you're in a kitchen. And that follows my general theorem that cooking isn't about recipes or proportions or ingredients or time. It's about vibes, man. It is <laughs> Cooking's just so vibes. You're just, you gotta vibe and flow through With it. With sauces like this, it's all based on vibes. I'll say that but like mm -hmm. like cutting a fish properly is something that like technique yeah, technique that you driven. need or else imagine if the fish was like like this much thicker it would have changed the dish yeah it would be a it would have are you guys gonna like eat that or like can i keep eating you can't well, no i don't want to be but you know when you go out to like a fancy restaurant with your friends and there's like you know a really like high ticket app it's like a 34 dollar like crab yeah, thing yeah, yeah. And they all this take one sure bite $34. and they're all talking and you're yeah. just kind of like standing there especially with crudo dishes there's always like five pieces uh -huh. yeah, yeah and you're like i just want the whole thing but there's four myself. people yeah. do i have anything in my teeth yeah, you want me to get it? Yeah. Oh, you can I get it? Oh. Wait, no, pull your bottom lip down. Well, then you can't even see. <laughs> Wait, this fork is in my mouth. Do you consent? Okay. Oh, you stabbed I'm sorry, it. I didn't stab her. Okay. Oh, yeah, you got it. Now you, now you have to eat it and okay. swallow it. I've just pushed it. There it goes. Yeah. Now it's on your tongue. You're good. Yep. All right, cool. <laughs> We're good? We're yeah. good? Okay, that was a beautiful dish. Are you ready for mine? Yeah. So you just push your dish. Yeah, yeah. Oh, Josh, you could just take it, man. Just, yeah, just, yeah, just eat it okay. like a bowl of cereal. Yep. It's fine. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's really interesting. Each bite would be like eight bucks at a restaurant. <laughs> now you got a lot of green. You got a lot of green <laughs> stuff in your dish. You think I care? No. Okay. Should I talk about my dish yet? Oh wow, really? Mm. Okay. okay. This is my dish that made me fall in love with cooking. <laughs> wow. So, so this is a. Sorry, can you hold that? Thanks. No, like put it down <laughs> over there. Okay, so this is a vanilla cake with a vanilla bean chantilly cream and a plum compote. You do a fancy yeah. So fancy. Um, this is when I was 19 years old and I had a job at a chocolate store, my first ever food job. And uh, again, I was working as a sales associate and then I kind of 
there was a research and development kitchen in the back and I basically knocked on the door and I'm like, hey, can I hang out with you guys? I think this is a really cool job. And they're like, sure, come on in. And I'm like, I know that feeling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then I went in and then I had no idea what I was doing, right? So um, during my stage, which is where you kind of go in there and you work for free, except it wasn't like necessarily free because I was still getting paid my oh, wage good. kind of. It was, it was a little bit, it was a little bit sticky. That's situation. so much of the restaurant industry. Yeah. I was working for free and was kind of paid yeah, a wage. Yeah. So um, it was a little bit sticky in that situation, but um, they basically had a, had a little cafe and they had a bakery section. And then um, at the end of the day, we would take all the things um, to go or we would donate them, whatever. So they gave me this cake and then they said, okay, Nicole, you have 45 minutes to do something with it. Sorry. And I said, Okay, so instead wait at your job they just went full like yeah, chopped episode pretty going. much yeah. yeah yeah it was it was like a slow day like it, it was raining outside it was like no one was coming in and they're just like we have time to kill we want to see what you can do here you go so have scary. fun yeah so I'm like okay I guess I'm gonna have fun the cool thing about this job was in the back there was this incredible spice rack of spices from all over the world like it was the first time I saw things like like galangal root mm -hmm. or or long pepper or or leaking li powder. So I was completely flabbergasted and, and they told me to use it. And I said, okay. So I go in and I and I didn't really know how to use a mixer. So I made hand whipped cream by hand. And then um, I realized that before that I learned something about soft peaks. Mm -hmm. So it's wherever your whipped cream is like nice and soft and it's not necessarily, I'm sorry I did that, you're gonna eat this. But like it's, it's, like, it's like whenever the whip isn't like like too whipped so it's like fluffy, it kind of cascades over, over whatever you're doing. So I made a soft peak whipped cream and then they had vanilla paste which I thought was the coolest thing in the mm -hmm. world. I'm like vanilla paste, what the hell? So I threw that in there. I threw some salt and some sugar mm -hmm. to make it like a really nice balanced topping. And then there was like, one of the girls used to go and just go to the farmer's market during like our break. Sorry, I had to lick my <laughs> finger. Like she would go and she, and she just got like a bunch of plums or like a bunch of stone fruit. Mm -hmm. And then, then um, they told me I could use free rain whatever's in the kitchen. So I took like three of her, of her plums. <laughs> And then stole I added, a couple yeah. employee yo plays. From I, the stole, fridge. I stole some plums. I chopped them up. I added sugar, a little bit of salt again, um, Chinese five spice powder, which oh. I was not comfortable using. I used uh, lemon juice and yuzu juice because they had both of those things. And then I just cooked it down into like a compote syrup thing. And then I presented a plate just like this. Wow. I presented this exact plate. So if you'd like, Josh, we have a. Okay, well, we have a fresh fork. We have, we have a fresh one. I was trying to get my old fork, <laughs> and then um, I dropped a thing. So yeah, dig in. This was this was the dish that made me fall in love with cooking because I told myself, if I can make the people that I that I work for happy, then I, who knows what I can do? And if I have a blank slate, like a little piece of cake, who knows what I can achieve? So that's this is mm. what made me fall in love with with cooking and the artistry that is. Food. Tastes like Christmas. <laughs> really? That's the plum good. combo. Yeah, the warm slice yeah, and the plum really combo. Nice. Yeah. This is. I feel like I'm learning so much about all of your like thought processes that went into cooking, and I'm I now mine. I'm gonna be ashamed of mine. Wait, so did they like it? Yeah. So they so they all ate, and they're like, "This is great, Nicole. Good job. See you tomorrow." Mm. So it was like you really nonchalant, job. but I, the whole time I was like panicking mm. and sweating and nervous. I was like, "45 minutes. What can I do in 45 minutes?" So I kind of just did like the most simplest thing slash the most creative thing I could think of at that time. I think that's important though, is to just make food taste good and not yeah. necessarily get too creative with it because I yeah. think people try to do that. Yeah. And this mm -hmm. is just like really, really good. Yeah, it was it was good, it was easy, and I had no idea it would turn this beautiful color, which it did turn this beautiful color yeah. whenever I made it. So yeah, just, just one of my silly little creative ventures, I guess. Josh! <laughs> What did you? Well, mine's stupid. I'm I didn't no, know you were both making good things. Okay. Well, don't be stupid. This is unequivocally the dish that made me fall in love with food. I made it when I was 10 years old for the first time. And I remember <laughs> I was 10 years old. Check this out. This is spiced crepes with seafood risotto filling. This is neither a crepe nor is that risotto inside. <laughs> what had happened was I'd always really loved food and I never had, you, you've heard about my disappointing childhood, yeah. I never had access to good food. And I always dreamed of eating fancy food that I saw other people eat, that I saw people eating on TV. And then when I was 10 years old, uh, my dad finally got a full-time job as a special ed teacher in LA County and he was making $50,000 a year. Woo! And that was the wow. most money that I could have ever possibly imagined. So I was like, we're rich now, baby. Yeah. Uh, still had like a lot of debts. 
Yeah, there was like some child supporters, you know, but anyways, point <laughs> is, yeah. we can now afford to go to a grocery store, which is pretty crazy. And so I was 10 years old and I took an interest in cooking and my dad was like, hey, I'll do all the other chores if you just want to cook for us every night. Aww. And so from the time that I was 10 years old, he would give me a budget and there was like a Trader Joe's right across the street. I would walk over to the Trader Joe's, like $20 bill, and I would buy up ingredients. And I remember they had this super, super cheap, it was like a mixed seafood bag that they still have there today. It's yeah. baby squid, scallops, and shrimp, I believe. Okay. okay. And back then it was like five bucks for a bag of a pound of this. So I bought that. Got some rice, goat cheese. Ooh, fancy! They had on sale because I like I knew all the terms. Yeah. And I, I was a latchkey kid watching Food Network, and I just didn't know how it all went together. We didn't even have like internet at the time. Yeah. Um, and so like internet existed, we just didn't pay for it. I mm -hmm. have to go to the library to use it. So I didn't have access to any recipes, and I was like. I think I know what risotto is. Mm -hmm. I think it's creamy rice. Boom, goat cheese, milk, rice, just boiled <laughs> boiled uh, minute rice. And so I stirred that together, and then I just threw the frozen seafood into like a pan and cooked it with some uh, some mushrooms. Oh, nice. Mm -hmm. okay. Terrible combination, but that's Very what I bad. did. And then I mashed it together into the rice, and then I was like, I feel like I want this to be more burrito-like than it currently is, so I made what I called spiced crepes, which was Krusty's pancake mix. It was like nine cents cheaper than Bisquick, mm -hmm. and I thinned it out with a bunch of uh, Frank's Red Hot hot sauce. Spiced. Mm. And I made this and I tasted it and I'm like, I'm a dumb child. I probably think this is good, but I was immensely proud of it because it sounded very fancy. Uh, and then my dad ate it and he loved it. And uh, one day what really made me fall in love with food, what made me understand the power of how like food could lead to self-esteem and pride. And the thing that really kicked off my, you know, decades long cooking journey after that was when he had a potluck at his school for all his new teacher friends. And he asked me to make a bunch of these Aww, to give new cute. teacher friends so he could say my son made this. It was so proud. And so this is like a genuine, very sweet memory to me. And I have not tasted it since I was probably 11 years old. Wow. I eventually learned how to cook and stopped making this. But this is a signature dish for a solid like four month period of my life. That's very, very sweet. I can't wait to try it. <laughs> I feel like the idea is there. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah like a like risotto burrito? Yeah. Risotto burrito? <laughs> Sure. Yeah, it's it's nice and dense. That's good. Mm -hmm. This has been faithfully recreated. It's it's almost gummy to the Just touch. Just like how you made it? I think this is before I knew that you had to salt food. There's no salt. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. But you do get a little bit of fake maple flavor from the pancakes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm trying to imagine like a potluck of like tenured teachers all eating this. And just going like, mm, so and my dad's like, my son made it. Let me get a mushroom. They, they, so you actually did it. You made yeah. for the potluck. Made like a How dozen many did you make? You made a dozen? Made like a dozen, brought them, you know, cut them up. Mm-hmm. This mm -hmm. is starch on a starch. It's not that bad. But you say seafood risotto with spiced crepes. Yeah, that sounds, buzzwords, buzzwords. Buzzwords, baby. And 10 year old me was really into that. Yeah. Um, I think you should recreate it and like use the techniques that you know now to just like Make, make it the same Nitrogen dish, yeah. frozen squid. <laughs> <laughs> it's not Gross. bad. I understand why this is a stepping stone for you. That'd be really fun to actually like make this using what I know now. Yeah. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. Really good. See you next time in another episode. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this tastes terrible, to be clear. This it's not that not bad. Good. It's not that bad. I get no salt. Uh, lots, of, <laughs> lots of salt. Yeah, roast 10-year-old yeah, me, lots Nicole. Of, lots of, lots of, uh, lots of gummy, uh -huh. soft. But some, there's some yummy pockets. I got a mushroom, unexpected. Mm -hmm. I, got, I got a piece of seafood, very unexpected. So mm -hmm. it makes sense. Oh, the bell. <laughs> I was supposed to respond to that. It was the bell. Do you know what that means, guys? Pavlov, you no. have failed. Do you know what that means? What does it mean? It's time to answer some advice. The, I mean, the rice really turns into a brick. Yeah, yeah, very yeah. brick-like. Uh, <laughs> Jessica Saylor says, how do I tell someone who says they hate salt, even on a stick or other meats? I'm sorry, let me take that because there's no salt in this. Yeah, yeah, that was a great segue. How do I, t okay, Jessica Saylor says, how do I tell someone who says they hate salt, even on steak or other meats, that I have been sneaking it in for years because they are wrong? And no, mm. they don't have a health reason, and no, I don't go overboard with the salt. It's a light pinch with a little MSG. Lily? Uh, Lily? Lily um, I don't know how you're friends with them, if you're related to them, but I would just... I don't trust them at all. You should probably just not be friends with you them. Don't them. <laughs> you don't, don't trust them? I don't trust the person, the person, person that person. doesn't like the salt. You I don't trust a person who lies to their friend for a long time. Okay, That's it's crazy. Hold on, hold on. Let the 30 no, we're going to fight let, with let, this. They, 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 they clearly seconds. don't li They like the salt because they're eating, they're cooking. So. Can I respond? 
Uh, yeah, sure. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. I think what they like is having an empathetic friend. I think if you tell a friend that you don't like something, it's not your job to convince them. It's certainly not your job to trick them. <laughs> you know, like, do I agree with them? Not necessarily, but sneak and salt. To your friend, you don't you don't know what sort of health issues they may have lying. We don't know. We don't have know. health issues. Well, oh, I'm sorry. You're a doctor now. Now Lily's a doctor. It Dr. Lily. It. Dr. Lily. Tell them tell them what they should be doing with their lives. I don't know, but they should just not be friends with each other then. I don't know. She Maybe. should eat this, not a pinch of salt. Yeah, that's true. Just what would I do, you ask? <laughs> yeah, Nicole. <laughs> Let me go ahead and answer that. What I would do is just not do it anymore because now it's known in the public and that friend will probably watch this video. That's true. And they will look at this name and say, I am friends with a girl named Jessica Saylor. And then it will just create a lot of problems for you. So um, if you have like skeletons in your closet that are similar to this, just yeah. don't write them in. No. Just don't That's do that. True. Don't damage your friendships over these videos. I think Please. about that a lot. Don't do that. We do that enough for ourselves. Mm -hmm. We don't need you to do that, okay? There'd be a podcast and they're like, my name's Michael J and I work for a large energy company in Salem, Oregon. And I was like, do you think that's going to keep you anonymous? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Crazy so, person. Keep it on. Maybe your name really isn't that. That's true. Maybe, maybe. But yeah, your friendship's kind of over. <laughs> Sorry mm -hmm. about it. Well, thank you so much for stopping by. We'll see you next time. We love you so much. I view all friends as just potential subscribers. That's shady. Why? What's better than a mythical beast? A hydrated mythical beast. Shop mythical bestiary and always hydrated nalgenes at mythical.com.